I'm Spencer Mazik, and joining me now is lawyer turned ice cream maker Victoria Lai. She is the founder and owner of Ice Cream Jubilee in Washington, D.C. Welcome, Victoria. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. So, Victoria, technically you still have your day job, and it's not making ice cream, so what is it? I'm an attorney. I work for the Department of Homeland Security and Immigration Policy. Okay, it sounds very official there, but when did you begin experimenting with dessert making? Was it while you were at Fordham Law School? You know, I was always making ice creams and desserts ever since I was a little girl. But um, I think that I started thinking about making ice cream in a more intense fashion um, after I was done with law school, after I'd passed the bar, after I'd finished a clerkship, actually. And I took some of my vacation time and I started working in a pie shop. Yeah, and I just I, loved it so much. It was a pie shop in Brooklyn, New York. Is that right? That's right. Four and 20 <laughs> Blackbirds is down in uh, Gowanus. And uh, it's just a, a little oasis of happiness down there. So you said that you always had an interest in dessert making, but when and before law school, uh, did you think of it as a budding interest or hobby, not anything that you could really build a career around? I never thought of food and desserts and certainly something just niche like ice cream as a career or a business. It was just something that I did on the side. Maybe I would have dinner parties um, after work or on the weekends. But uh, when I moved down to Washington, D.C., um, I started a blog uh, just about ice cream. It was sort of a way to stay in touch with my friends in New York City. And uh, that was my first way to find out how many people were interested in the flavors that I was making. And after that, I started thinking about um, um, selling my ice cream when people just kept asking for it for catering and restaurant opportunities and then from there it just naturally organically became a little bit of a business. And so before we get to Ice Cream Jubilee I actually want to just back up for just a second because you obviously had other interests while you were in law school so can you tell us about your path to the Department of Homeland Security? Sure. So um, actually, starting from before I went to law school, I started in political campaigns. So I love the energy and the interaction and sort of the entrepreneurial nature of uh, working on political campaigns. And uh, so I did that for several years before going to Fordham Law School. And then at Fordham, I, uh, I worked a lot in clinics and uh, was very active in student government and student organizations. Um, but at, at the same time was sort of gearing up for a career as a litigator at um, you know, a large law firm in Manhattan, just like many of my peers were. Um, I stayed at Paul Hastings, Janofsky & Walker for about a year, but then I left shortly after that because I had already accepted a clerkship. The beauty of political campaigns and law school and, uh, and opportunities like that is that taken in small chunks of time there's almost more room to experiment with your career so every time I was in transition between uh, you know taking the bar and going to Paul Hastings I took an opportunity to go and work on another campaign between um, clerking and uh, coming down to the Department of Homeland Security I had that opportunity to work in a pie shop so all the time <laughs> while honing my legal career I've been able to find what makes me tick, the passions and the extra dimensions that uh, make my life more interesting. And, and a lot of times that has to do with food and travel. <laughs> well, and so with all your background and interest in dessert making, uh, ice cream making specifically, did that come into play while you were at working at the pie shop or sometime after that? Well, I think ice cream goes with just about anything, but ice <laughs> cream and pie right is You're absolutely right about that. <laughs> <laughs> And then ice cream and pie, that's just, uh, it's one of the classic combinations. So I started bringing ice cream I was making at home down to the pie shop, sharing it with the sisters that run the pie shop. And uh, that's where I thought that I would, um, th that's, that's why it really caught on. But the reason I started with ice cream is really much more personal. You know, my, uh, my dad worked, uh, you worked sometimes late into the night and wasn't always uh, able to have dinner with my sister and me, but we were always so excited to have him come and share ice cream with us. And so for me, it's a, it's a little slice of childhood. It's a little slice of an opportunity to bring your friends or family together. And uh, whether or not you just have plain vanilla or you have really creative flavors that have a little bit of an international or grown-up uh, twist, you know, 
it, it just makes you happy. Well, let's talk about some of those flavors because now you have flavors that include strawberry, black tea, honey pine nut, and gin and tonic, just to name a few. So how do you come up with these unique ice cream flavors? Well, you know, that's, that's a question I get a lot. And frankly, ice cream flavors just come to me. <laughs> One of my favorite things, I, 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 I suppose I think in colors and flavors. Um, which was a surprise to me after thinking in uh, you know black and white and courier font and uh, legal briefs and memos for such a long time. Right. You know, colors and colors and flavors actually opened up a new side of uh, of my personality. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to turn cocktails that I try in little mixology bars into ice cream flavors. Um, also, sometimes if you, if you order a savory dish, you'll have a uh, sauce on the side. And sometimes with the right combination, that can be turned into an ice cream flavor inspiration as well. And some of the flavors that I've seen also have a bit of an Asian twist on them in terms of the food and the culture. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's just, uh, it wasn't deliberate in any way, but as a Chinese American who was born and raised in Houston, Texas, um, I think that you get my love of ice cream and also the love of Asian flavors. One of my favorite and most popular flavors is Thai iced tea ice cream and Vietnamese coffee and mm. coconut lychee lime. All of those things, um, they are becoming more and more mainstream, but to me, they've always been a little bit homey. Well, so where do you get your ingredients for your delicious ice cream? <laughs> all, of my, all of my dairy and cream are from a local all-natural creamery in Maryland. And um, all of my ingredients are as naturally sourced as they can be. But sometimes, uh, like my blueberry pie ice cream, we make the pie crust right there. So to say that it's fully uh, um, organic and natural would be a stretch. Same with my peppermint pop rocks. Pop rocks aren't going to be organic, but they're a ton of fun to have in ice cream. <laughs> no, they're sure not going to be. But so, Victoria, where do you can't possibly make these large batches of ice cream from your home there in Washington, D.C., can you? Um, you know, I started making ice cream in my home, and I still experiment with flavors in my home. But you're right. I make ice cream out of a commercial licensed kitchen. It's a food incubator space here in D.C. called Union Kitchen. And it's been a really great way for many different food businesses to sort of get up on their feet without a lot of the startup costs that used to be um, necessary to start a business or an ice cream scoop shop or a cupcake shop or that sort of thing. So I make ice cream after work on Monday and Thursday nights. Um, I have a team of great volunteers with whom I speak. Uh, I talk about marketing and branding and social media and business operations. And then I also have um, some other folks who just hear my story, hear that I make ice cream on the side and say, that sounds like a lot of fun. Can I come and join you? <laughs> and I, I let them come. Um, I've had some volunteers this past summer who are studying for the bar exam, and this is really a great reprise for them and I'm glad to have given them a little bit of a, a flavor oasis. Yeah, it's a great way to let off a little steam and to take a break from studying. Uh, but so you seem to have replaced the ice cream trucks there in the nation's capital with ice cream bicycles. Can you tell us about your bicycle delivery service? Yeah, absolutely. So we just launched um, an ice cream subscription service. So it's like a like a fruit or vegetable CSA, but instead of getting healthy foods, you get uh, really imaginative ice cream flavors. And we're using bicycles, bike couriers, to deliver this to people's homes and offices because, you know, like many major cities, parking and traffic around D.C. can be, um, can be terrible. And with things like dry ice and, uh, you know, industrial coolers, Staying frozen isn't a problem, even in these heat waves that we've been experiencing. Yeah, that was going to be my next question, is how can you guarantee that the ice cream is still frozen? But it seems like you've solved that solution. And also, speaking of the, the heat wave, people are going to want a lot of ice cream. So how else can they get some of your ice cream? How else can they sample it? Sure. So in the Washington, D.C. area, I'm selling in two different grocery stores currently. One is Glen's Garden Market in the DuPont area. It's at 20th and S Street Northwest. And the other one is Silver Spork down nearby the Capitol in Eastern Market. Well, I carry you, 11 flavors there, so well, check it out. Yeah, I certainly will if I'm ever in D.C. But <laughs> yeah, you have an insanely hot product. I mean, ev people want it. People love it. You also like making it. So, Victoria, when are you going to give up your day job and just focus on making ice cream full time? 
You know, I'm taking this whole experience, this whole journey day by day, week by week. Um, my whole summer has been geared towards uh, um, competing in the DC Scoop competition for the title of best ice cream in Washington, DC. And that's coming up on Sunday. And then after that happens, I'll just see where it goes. You know, I, f I find my current job interesting and fulfilling. I like being able to use my education, but I also like being able to trans translate um, and transfer some of my skills, organizational skills, uh, legal skills, into something absolutely wild and new, like ice cream and like building a business. So, um, you know, stay tuned and keep, <laughs> keep visiting my, my website and my Twitter feed. And as things develop and I get into new grocery stores, uh, you'll, you'll be the first to know. Yeah, I was going to say it must be at this point like having two full-time jobs, managing your time between the two jobs. I guess, I guess that is true. I, I do have two jobs, one being ice cream and one being my attorney job. But, you know, making ice cream and building this business has been energizing, but at the same time relaxing. And that's how I know that it's something that I should still continue. When putting in f four hours in a kitchen seems to add value to my life. You know, my, the next day when I'm not in the kitchen, I'm still coming off of that high and that happiness of it. That means, that, 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 that means to me that I'm on the right path. So uh, until it becomes a chore, um, and I don't foresee that happening. I'm just going to keep doing that and um, keep encouraging people to find that thing that inspires them and makes them tick. And even if they need to get a few hours less sleep, um, and they should do it. It, they it should brings do, so much value. Absolutely. They should do whatever it takes to make sure that they fulfill their passion or their dream. And it sounds like you found your calling. And can you tell us, though, about the name? How did you come up with the name Ice Cream Jubilee? Because it sounds a little bit like a party or a celebration. <laughs> absolutely. So in, in coming up with my, my name, Ice Cream Jubilee, I really wanted words, I wanted to pick words that made me happy. Now the words ice cream, undeniably, just hearing it makes me very happy. And then the words jubilee, you can't say jubilee without smiling. It's, it's physically impossible. Together, I, I think that it conveys uh, a whimsy and a creativity and a sense of celebration that should come with every, every experience with ice cream. And finally, Victoria, where do you see, what's your dream, obviously, for the future of ice cream jubilee? You know, I'd love to continue reaching as many customers as possible. I, I think personally making ice cream myself has its own limitations. So I'm looking into how I can grow and be in more stores. Maybe even all my friends in Washington and all my family, I mean, all my friends in New York and Washington and my family in Houston and Ohio, they all want to have some too. So <laughs> it might get really big someday. We'll see. Well, I sure hope so because I, I'm dying to try some. So I might have to make a special trip down there just to to try the ice cream and also to visit Cake Love, which is something else that I haven't tried yet. And I, I interviewed Warren Brown just a few weeks ago, or a few months ago, I should say. But, but good luck with everything, Victoria. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Spencer. For more information on this or other topics, subscribe to BloombergLaw.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody.